mid episode weirdly paced. I think we can get away with talking about it without too many spoilers for those who don't well, have seen it yet. Well, you want to know what it is? It's it's that it's not that I would say like if it was like episode three or four, it wouldn't be weirdly paced. But Disney Star Wars has this like problem that when they're at the end of a season in a crucial episode, they fucking make weird ass paced episodes for no freaking reason. Right. And, like, and how long was that episode? What like thirty minutes, thirty something it, minutes? Like it felt like it was like twenty five minutes, but it was definitely longer. Guy. Like when I was watching that last night with my mom, it ended and she was like, she looked at me and she goes, seriously, like that's it. And I was like, exactly, that's what I'm saying. Like, and I wouldn't mind if you gave us all the fucking meat and potatoes in 30 minutes, but you didn't. And like, can you do that in 30 minutes though? Yes, because Clone Wars did it in 22. True, true. And those, some of the Clone Wars episodes that we've seen feel like they're an hour long, but they're not. Star Wars dog was going on. And, and like again, without getting into too many spoilers, I, I think one of the decisions that Balin made was really weird. Actually, two of the decisions that mm, the second one kind of makes sense. Letting the uh, fucking spoiler, letting Ahsoka walk, like get away. Um I what's going on, Damio? That one made sense to me because he's if since the first episode he said he didn't want it would be a shame if she was killed, you know. I still feel like he's being pulled to something on Peridia. Whether it's Abeloth, whether it's the sun. I see a lot of people out there all of a sudden saying it's Kujet, the Zepho from the tomb of Kujet from Fallen Order. Um, I don't know why. That's a little bit of a stretch. Apparently, on the Minas Tirith like building that the Knights uh-huh. is on, apparently there's some glyphs that literally say Kujet's name or something. Um, well, I gotta tell you, Balin's my uh, favorite character in the show. Oh yeah, dude! If they make a hot toy of Balin, I'm buying it because facts. Even if they fuck his character up, I like Ray Stevenson a lot as that character and in general and i i think that killing him off would just be such a waste <laughs> yeah exactly exactly so we'll right find out, we'll find out what it is in the next season in three years theory hasn't talked to him, talked about any of that he hasn't been here sabine uh, actress is theory the best. US. sabine actress is good yeah, that's kind of weird because you're watching them too, Damio, by the way. Like, if you're seeing me in I, chat, that means you're watching them too. So I don't even want to fucking hear it. Well, it's not it's not even that. It's also the fact, how would he know what they are talking about if he's not watching them too? Exactly. And and right. on top of that point, I like Josh and I've met Theory. I watch all of Theory's things uh, the same way that I watch all of Gary's things like Gary from Neurotic and a lot of the people from G&G like Ryan's actually been pretty fair with the show which is surprising because there's some things in there that Ryan's like actually like that but it doesn't fit and I mean theories like theories globbing all over it but yeah, like, I don't everyone's entitled with... to their opinions though I mean 90% of the stuff that I watch 99% of the stuff that I watch on YouTube, I don't agree with all their takes. Like, I like the people from Geeks and Gamers. I like Nerdrotic. I like Friday Night Tights. Mm-hmm. I, I like Den of Nerds. I like Star Wars Theory. I rarely agree 100% on any of their takes. But I like yes. to watch them because they're good people. Same with Drinker. Same with Mahler. Like... And everyone's entitled to their own views, too. I actually think that like. Mahler and um, Drinker are very fair. And if you watch Josh from Den of Nerds, it must be, dude. It must be. If, if, Ronnie, what's going on? What's up, Ronnie? If you watch 
Josh from Dead of Nerds. And I don't watch him all the time, but I mostly just watch Nerd Theory these days because he all he's doing is talking about Marvel and DC, and I really could give a shit. Um, but when he just does a fun stream like he did, I think last this uh, m- Monday this past, um, not not the Monday that we just had, but the Monday, you know, week before, um, I believe he just that was the day that he did a video or a live stream where he just went over actual star wars fan theories that were from like 1977 all the way up to now and just going over all these different cool theories and like that's a fun stream like that has nothing to do with disney star wars like that's just a fun stream that yeah that too like i don't watch him that much anymore but i like josh because josh is actually pretty based when he gets to that point like you'll see him on on nerd theory if you watch that like quite a lot he's like no fuck that like i don't agree like i'm pissed at this show behind the scenes josh has been a shitty person to mutual friends of ours and discord i have unsubbed and stopped and some membership a a while ago i'll have to to shit on it Uh, that's that's stuff i don't know you know damn so i didn't know that that's, that's a matter of opinion i I don't know that um, if it's somebody that I'm friends with directly. Like, uh, I mean, I, I, I can assume who it is. I'm not going to say their name, even though I say their name a, a lot on the show. Um, yeah, I would like to hear that from them. Um, but and just get their take on it. However, I'm mostly there for the theory. Um, just because I watch Josh's streams every once in a while. It's whatever. I mean, I'm still subbed to Mike Zero just for the culture. Like, I just want to see what names he comes up with for his videos, dude. And Mike, Mike got fucking based, dude. He I can't from... believe that you still sub to him, bro. Dude, yeah. I stay subbed to him because I want to see the next time that Brie Larson's gonna assassinate Kathleen Kennedy and take over Lucasfilm. Like, I, you I know just... what though? It's funny, bro. Like, it makes me smile. That is true. Like, because when I video titles, I laugh. I'm like. He's just doing his thing. Keep going, Mike. You know, you're killing it anyway. Like, and, and to be honest, that guy's won YouTube. Like, he has won YouTube. He's so good. Like, and, and it, it's all bullshit. But it's like, but he's still making money, getting tons of views for these crazy ass videos. I don't watch a single video, but I stay sub just to see what he comes up with. Exactly, dude. Stay sub to Mike. I, I really want Mike Zero is yes, but it's fucking hilarious. I don't watch any of the shit, but I still find him funny. And I would love Theory keeps asking him to come on. And I would love to have him and Theory talk. That would be great. That would be gold. And I know how some people feel about Theory. Um again, like doesn't matter to me. You can like who you like, dislike who you dislike. Like I know a lot of people that wouldn't fuck with Gary, Nerdrotic, or Deeks and Gamers, but I still like them. No. And I, I just... You know, you like who you like to watch, you agree with them, or you disagree with them. I think if you completely agree with everything that somebody says that you watch on YouTube, that's ultimate show. That's, that's, you're being a sheep. You can't agree with everything. Like, there's a lot of movies, and I love Critical Drinker. I'm, I'm reading this book right now, his first one. And there's, there's a lot of movies that. I did not hear that. I did hear that. Um, I'll talk about that in a second, because I did want to bring that up. But there's a lot of movies that you can watch, right? And you'll love them. Like, I love Prometheus, and I'm unapologetic about that. I know a lot of... I'm a big Alien fan, but I know a lot of people hate Prometheus. I love it. I saw that movie when I was, what, 12 or 13? And I... I How did it came out? Something like that. And I absolutely love it. If you were to throw Prometheus on right now, I'm like, good fucking movie. But I know that 90% of the fans fucking hate it. That's cool with me. You know, it's the, it's the same thing with a lot of these different franchises and these different movies and stuff like that. And that's how I feel about watching different YouTubers. 
like I'm unapologetically gonna like the people that I like. And you know, like I love Star Wars Santa, even though him and I fundamentally disagree on Star Wars. Uh, like a hundred percent. There's some things that we can come to common ground on, but I like Santa as a person. And that's where Geeks and Gamers comes in too, Nerdrotic, all the other people that I watch. I disagree with a lot of their shit, but I like them as people and I like how genuine they are. So I have no problem when, you know, I, I listen to them shit on Ahsoka for an hour. But then I also it doesn't, it doesn't change the fact that I'm like, I still want to go to the meetup someday, hang out with them, you know, like. Uh, I'm sorry. I've been busy. Um, Santa is a good dude. Facts. Yes, he is, Daryl. Yes, he is. Um, I was. I everybody go to Star Wars Santa because he's the most wholesome person I've seen on YouTube. He's just good, just just a sweetheart across the board, man. Don't forget, Meg. You love Meg as a person, even though she's not genuine. Santa is good. Never said I love Meg as a person. I said she's been a nice person to me. Never said I like her as a person. What she did and what Jason did on Santa's show is disgusting, and I denounce that fully. Of uh, you were there in the Discord when X Wing and I had a big conversation about that, you would know. So, I have nothing against Meg. I have nothing for her. Uh, but she's been nice to me. So then I had the pleasure of I seeing think, her last week and she was very cordial. I think also though, too, something that is important is that you have to um like there's certain like you know DC or like Marvel channels that like you know I'll watch that will say that they love you know the MCU and MCU. they love how the MCU is going, but you have to watch other people that you don't agree with in order to grow as a person. Fucking exactly. That's 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 yes. the fucking point. Like, I like Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers as a person. I still watch his Cobra cast when he gets all political about Trump, even though like I don't necessarily agree with all of that. But I also like I. You guys know I've said it before, not to get political, but I don't care about like I don't like either of them. So, I still watch people from both sides. I won't fucking watch Hassan, though. Cause fuck him. Or or Ethan Klein or any of that shit. I hate them. They, Sorry, hate's a bad word. I strongly dislike those people. However, I'm really glad they're doing as well as they are. I also will not watch Crowder. Or things like that. Although, I will watch Alex Jones sometimes because he cracks me the fuck up. He best best Joe Rogan episode was Alex yeah. Jones and Eddie. That was so good, man. That was the best fucking Joe Rogan. That's facts. Damier does say the most of those things. Yeah, he does. I I hardly even go into the Discord anymore because I've been getting just like straight up bullied lately. So I just don't even bother to go in there anymore. I don't I don't got time for it anymore. Um now I'm now. Now I'm starting to work in my second job, so like I literally do not have time for it. When Wednesday is like my only day off now, so like, Shit. yeah. Um, but I mean, but uh, I guess back to Ahsoka real quick. Like, there was something that I want to say about Ahsoka. I just I'm loving Thrawn, dude. Like, yeah, I, I like, think Forrest does a good job. Should he should have worked out more? Because Thrawn's supposed to be fit. Mm -hmm. Thrawn will keep himself fit physically no matter what. I wish they had a salamary on his his neck, you know, chilling. The lizard. You know, like I wish yeah. there was things like that. You could have literally said the salamary was from Peridia. And he got one. Like, it would have been so simple. Just put the freaking salamary around him. Like, he had all the time... He's like worried about these force users, destroy them with prejudice. Like, yeah. And, and he doesn't have a salamary. It, uh, it's just stupid because also rolling. Have one. Even talking to the witches, Thrawn would have a salamary. 
And 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 just because he doesn't know if they're gonna instantaneously betray him at some point. So he would always have a Salamiri on him. I don't get why they never did that. There's a Salamiri literally painted on the Chimera on the bottom. There's two Salamiri. Like, but you don't have him actually have one. Which is also stupid. Roland. Uh, another thing is too that I don't like, even though I'm I'm liking Thrawn, is and you know Thrawn better than me because you actually read like yeah, he's my top five character uh, books. One of my top five Star Wars characters. I fucking love him. I'm not as well versed with Thrawn. I only know him from like you know Rebels and stuff. But Thrawn never seems scared ever, really. Like like Thrawn doesn't seem like the type of guy to get scared. He's always ten steps ahead. He doesn't yeah, have anything so- to fear because he's already planned out for the worst outcomes. And they're, so then what? I don't so, get why they so, did it. Like, they did it so, like, not perfect in Rebels, but pretty damn close. I don't... He feels like a different person in, in Ahsoka. Yeah. Compared to Rebels. Like, if you watch a scene from Rebels of how cool and calculated he is no matter what, but you can still see that he's a badass because he's literally fighting two droids... Um no, like next, yeah. no 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 it's not skeleton crew. Not? Skeleton oh. crew is next. Oh okay. And we know nothing about Bad Batch. Yeah, I have a bad feeling about this too, Uncle Kenobi. I agree. Um, I now why are you really messing with me? Because you already fucked with my all-time favorite Star Wars character, Kenobi. It, like I I. <laughs> When I was a little kid, I aspired to be like Obi Wan because he's so peaceful. He's but yet powerful and negotiative. Like, like I he looked always up does the right thing. Yeah. He, he always does the right thing, even if it means that he loses the love of his life. He still didn't turn to the dark side when S- Satine was killed, and mm-hmm. that's what Maul was trying to get him to do, mm-hmm. and he still didn't. And I, I, that was so powerful for me, and. You already messed with my favorite character. Now you're messing with arguably not counting Anakin or Luke. My second favorite character, which is Thrawn. You already fucked with Boba Fett, who's an, a, another huge character of mine. Like, I've loved him since I was a little baby. Like, you know, like my parents were giving me little Boba Fett action figures when I was like two. You know, mm-hmm. like, so you're messing with all of my favorite characters now, like, and I can't give you the benefit of the doubt, Disney. I really can't. And I wish that I could. Yeah. I wish that I could say, you know what? They've got it. It's Thrawn. They can do it this time. But I don't think you can. Like, there's no evidence that you've given me to trust you at all with any of the characters that I love. And I love Ahsoka, too. I hated her at first. But then throughout the Clone Wars, I really like her. What's the guy to do with anything? Hey, you know what? They didn't fuck with Padme. They messed with Leia. Whatever. Damien, stop being a fucking troll. But you're derailing the conversation, you twat. But yeah, bro. They're... They, you're you're taking characters that I've looked up to, male and female, and I've loved. Like, do you remember the time back when The Force Awakens came out and Samuel Jackson was at Star Wars Celebration, like on mm-hmm. the screen, and he literally mm-hmm. said to the crowd, like, oh, I I would love to reprise my role as Mace Windu. Like, George always said he mm-hmm. lived. Like, all this stuff. I don't want that anymore. Nope. We wanted that so badly. We were like, yes, that would be so cool. Like, a ton of the fandom was down down with that. Now I don't even want to see him ever again. I'm was cautious. My headcanon used to be that he lived. Now my headcanon mm-hmm. is like he's dead. He got hit by a cloud car as, they, as he fell. Like, he's dead. Like, like, and and so, I, I always thought he lived since I saw Revenge of the Sith. Since I was five years old, I always thought that he lived, and now I don't want him to live. 
because I don't want them to fuck with a character that I love. You've you have been in this fight since you were five years old, nah, it's like um seriously, bro. Andor, that's the one character that didn't mess up who I love. Like, you know, I know I'm in the minority there because I'm a little biased because I like Cassian Andor as a character. I loved him since Rogue One. And mm -hmm. I thought he was really cool. He's like a space James Bond in a way. He's doing like all this espionage and all this other stuff. That was really interesting. And that's the only character that didn't fuck up. Mm -hmm. But then again, that's a Disney created character. That's not one of the originals. Everybody else is fucked up. Their storyline. I'll always adding too much to them. Like, and and I I used to not think this way, but now I'm almost as much as I love Ahsoka, it would have been a fine... And you could still do an Ahsoka show before it, but it would have been a fine ending if she did die fighting Vader. Because you opened up a huge can of worms with the world between worlds. A massive can of worms. That would have been fun. Yeah, Jyn is awesome. I like her a lot, too. I used to play as her in Battlefront 2015 all the time. She's really good. Yeah, dude. They're all hold you like like we did on the boo. Yeah, she is. She is. Um, Jones is a good looking woman. I cannot so that dog. I so like I wanted to say though too something that I've noticed because I was just watching um. I was watching the, you know, original trilogy, and I was also, um, well, I watched oh, yeah. Empire, <laughs> then I watched the, uh, re then I watched the Revenge of the Sith, and something that I noticed was that there's an insect on my floor. Damn. Compare fucking the lightsaber earwig, fighting. Bro, hold up, hold up. It's a fucking earwig on my floor. I need to take care of this. Keep talking. Rowan's about to fight. Rowan's no, about to fight a bug live on stream. Right now, bro. I can't do this shit. Um, Damio, I do not need... I do not need a girlfriend. I'm I'm chilling. I'm fine. I just need, like... I don't he know. The, love of, the warmth of a man. Stop, bro. Stop. Do not... Dude, stop. Stop, stop, stop. We get, but we get to look at a young boy Mandalorian facts. Okay, no, but I'm saying the thing about Disney Star Wars, yeah, like they fucked up the characters. But the thing that I dislike most is that I don't like how lightsabers are now because oh, yeah. Disney does not know anything about lightsabers. Fucking sign the petition that Star Wars Theory put out on Change.org or wherever the fuck it is. It's on his. Twitter, his Instagram, all, all that places, and YouTube. Sign the petition to bring Nick Gillard back to Star Wars because then you'll get lightsabers back. And Nick Gillard is down. He signed the petition himself. Mm -hmm. He knows about the petition. Like, literally, get Nick Gillard back. And what what, what has everybody said about this show? Hayden Christensen killed it with a lightsaber. You know why? Because he was trained by Nick Gillard. Mm -hmm. Bring Nick Gillard back to Star Wars. You'll get good lightsaber duels again. Not this... Like, Balin's okay because he has a different fighting style, but everybody else is just slow and methodical. Like, not everything is a samurai fight, man. Not everything has to be like the fight from A New Hope between Vader and, and Obi-Wan. F yeah, fucking they do! They do, dog. Fan film sabers look better. Yes, Uncle Kenobi. Hayden Christensen is the But shit. It's my man, bro. He is the... By the way, if you ever get to meet Hayden Christensen, coolest freaking dude, man. Like, if I could go back... Like, I met Mark Hamill. I met Stan Lee. Carrie Fisher waved to me. She was really nice. But... um. Hayden I'm Christensen, not disagreeing with you, far, Hayden Christensen and Ian McDermott are the nicest people. Um, Dude, I'm not did you see show, what he said? I'm not defending the show, but 
there's a lot of things that I can like in the show and a lot of things I dislike about the show. My dislikes might be greater than my likes. I haven't I liked the last two episodes. That I, enjoy. I haven't like, liked the last two episodes. Things, there's still some things that I enjoy. Like yeah. quite a lot. And I talked to but... Daniel about this last night. Um, Ezra doing the using the force as a like a weapon should have looked more like Teres Kasi. It should have been like Naruto and Sasuke fighting where they're just like Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. It should have looked like because even though he wasn't technically using Teres Kasi, which is basically Star Wars' version of like Kung Fu or Jutsu, um like you you're literally the, the power of using the force in hand to hand combat, which we've seen people do before. You don't necessarily need to force push everybody with your hit, like you're you're trying to do like a weak ass Kamehameha wave. Like, like you actually the force is in your punches. Like you should be able to do a one inch punch and just launch somebody. Like, and and like he should have just been using Terrace Kasi. That's a very good question. That's a great freaking question. But you know what my answer is, Daryl? Disney Star Wars writing. Sounds like a type of cheese. It does, actually. Terrace Kasi, yeah. But yeah. But Terrace Kasi is a really dope form of martial arts in Star Wars where you actually yeah. you can imbue the force into your body so you move faster. It's almost like force sprint or dash, but you're fighting so you Bottles, should right? you should literally look like writing crowd for directing. Yes, it is, dude. Because they don't care. They don't care. They literally don't care. Why are you allergic to cheese? What are you gay? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Remember that Daimyo cheese meme? Remember that? Yeah, you want to pull it up? <laughs> Do it. <laughs> That's good. I could. I won't. No. I promise, no, Donnie, no. I won't. It'll be no, a thumbnail no. at some point, though. Episode 100. That should... Uh, Episode that should 100 is going to have a wild thumbnail. Hopefully, I have better editing uh, software by Episode 100. But, no, but, like, I'm saying, though, you actually brought up how you don't like that they try to make every lightsaber fight like um Vader versus Obi Wan. It's not that they but, make it that way. It's not that they film it that way. It, everything is so slow. They make the lightsabers look heavy. Like I'm saying that it is, worked. Like hold on, it, a lightsaber is an elegant right. weapon for a more civilized age. Mm -hmm. It's light. The only thing heavy about it is the the handle itself, the hilt, the blade itself. Does not have weight. When you when you show everybody using it like it's a great sword or like a like a a rapier or a katana or something, it doesn't have weight. The blade does not have weight at all. That's why Anakin's able to go <laughs> boom with Obi Wan and, and Mustafar. Like it's not. There's no weight to the blade whatsoever. Facts. Well, to non-force users, that makes sense. Pilgrim, what's happening? What's up, um, Pilgrim? But no, so like, I have two points. One, Obi Wan and Vader's fight worked in 1977, but 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 that should not be the standard now. One, two. Yeah, in the, the you know, course, absolutely. Yeah, but. Because in, in 1977, the... he literally had, you can see it in the movie, there's literally a string, like a wire, coming down mm -hmm. from the hilt into his sleeve. Uh -huh. When they actually fight, dust comes off the blades. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. It's, like, yeah, that's, that's but... 1977. We, we in the Revenge of the Sith. That. Yeah, but then look at Revenge of the Sith. We have not gotten a fight. Like Revenge of the Sith, like Yoda versus Palpatine, or Anakin versus Obi Wan, 
Or or hell, we haven't got even gotten a fight like Dooku versus Anakin and Obi Wan in Attack of the Clones. Grand and Iris, we watched Revenge of the they Sith. They have done heavy. Recently. Yeah, but the heavy strike comes from them, not the weight of the saber. Right. The saber itself is not what's causing the heavy strike. Remember Anakin, that? Anakin uses a heavy strike all the time. However, mm -hmm. that's coming from Anakin's force ability, not coming from, and his physical strength, not coming from the blade itself. Remember in the, the Revenge of Remember in the Revenge of the Sith when um I think it was at the start of the fight they were going so fast that like you know they weren't even hitting each other they're just like spinning the lightsabers yeah bro that would not happen now that would not happen now no you're never gonna get a fight like the Battle of the Heroes ever again no and, and the that Battle sucks. of the Heroes is literally okay there's Two best lightsaber duels in Star Wars. Three, actually. One in the OT, which is Luke versus Vader in Return of the Jedi. Because of how mm -hmm. emotional that is, the impact of that, how good that fight is, how Luke almost gets dark. Actually does get dark for a minute. And then you have... I want to see if Chat guesses it. What are the other two? What are the other two best fights in Star Wars? Saber-wise. Dog, I just dropped the link in the chat, all right, chill. What are the two best fights in Star Wars? What do you think they are? Me? Yeah. Um, I would, well, Anakin versus Obi-Wan, one, but That's two. One of them. But two, I really... I actually um I'm talking to, I'm talking to show the sabers how they are and to show how a force user goes up against another force user. Like like not necessarily the emotional impact of the fight, but because I otherwise it would be Lude versus Vader, both of them. Empire and Return of the Jedi. That's a really, really good one. That's, That's a really good one. Really good one. That's a really That's great one. one. The first time you see him catch the lightning. So Anakin versus, Anakin Anakin versus, versus Dooku, Dooku attack of the clones. Great one. I was gonna say Maul versus Qui Gon and Obi Wan. Oh, yeah. The Battle of the Heroes. And when I call it the Battle of the Heroes, I'm not just I'm not just including Anakin and Yep. Yep. Yes. Yes. Dog got it. Dog got Duel it. Duel of the Fates, but yes. Yeah. Dog got it. Duel of the Fates. Yep. yep. That's it. Duel of the Fates is fucking amazing. I love though. So, Obi Wan versus uh, Grievous, though. Yeah, but Obi Wan versus, versus Grievous, Grievous is cool. way too short. True, true. It's yes. only like three yeah. minutes at most. Yeah, like it's really true. short because then the clones roll up and they're like, "Go, go, go!" And Grievous is like, "Ugh!" And he just runs away. Like, <laughs> yeah. The, the gravitas of that is when you first see him just go, <coughs> and he pulls up and it just goes. Like, <laughs> the first time you see him spin those sabers, get the fuck to ban him. No, I'm kidding. Reva versus Vader. I'm gonna assassinate you, yo. But no, the best. I can't assassinate him. He's a figure. But he's gonna call you racist now. I can't assassinate somebody who's not a public figure. Assassination is only for public figures. Um, okay, nobody said do du duel of the fates first. Yeah. Did he? Kenobi's right. Uncle Kenobi's correct. But Kenobi wins then. But but seriously, everything that comes from Grievous's fight is the first time you see him spin the sabers. First True. time you see somebody wield four sabers. If you want to talk all of Star Wars, there's some really great duels in Clone Wars, but I'm not counting that. I'm talking about the movies. 
Like there is some bomb ass so, duels in Clone Wars. So like, Alpatine versus Alpatine. Savage and Maul is sick. I but was I'm literally just gonna that. say that. Yeah, like, but I'm not counting that. Or like Maul versus Pre Vizsla to take over Mandalore, pretty dope. But I'm not counting that either. Like there, there's or Anakin versus Ahsoka or or when she gets turned dark by the sun on Mortis. Mm-hmm. Great at, great fight. And the same thing goes with like Maul and Ahsoka at the end of season seven or um Ahsoka versus Vader at the end of season two of Rebels. Like, yeah, there's some really great fights in animation, but that's animation. I do happen to that's agree with Dominic, though. That's what I'm. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It, that I'm talking. I'm not even mentioning the sequels either. I'm talking about the original six movies here. And yeah, I think the best duels in the original six movies. I mean, obviously, Empire Strikes Back is great, and so is Return of the Jedi. And I feel like you just have to put them on top. Yeah, that was that's got a great because, point. Vader Vader was really brutal in that. See, that's where you get the hard strikes, but that's not coming from the saber. That's coming from Vader. Mm-hmm. Where he's like, boom, boom, brah! And, he had, and then he gets hit on the shoulder by Luke, and he's like, ah! And then just hits him again and like knocks Luke over. Like, that's sick. Actually, we don't talk about those. Empire later, because you mentioned that. We don't mention those fights. No. We don't. Nope. I don't even mention. Why did you not include nine in there? Why only is there one in nine that I missed or something? Is there like, a good, yeah, is there a good fight in nine that I missed somewhere? <laughs> Shit. Something that Best I missed. part about nine is Lando. And that's just because Billy D. Williams is the shit. And in um McDermott. Like so I got a question. I mean, I know I got Kylo Ren, Ren here, but that's only because my grandmother got me this blanket when Force Awakens came out, and I just did you. I love Adam Driver. The best duel in all Star Wars is Yoda versus R two D two. When Yoda tried to like steal like the hot dogs and shit, yeah, he's like <laughs> smacking him with the stick, yo. <laughs> <laughs> yo, that's oh my, my favorite Yoda. Hi. That's my favorite Yoda. That's that's the best, man. The, well, the whole point of that was Yoda was testing Luke at that point. Mm-hmm. Like Luke, he was testing to see what Luke was, so he was acting like a nut job. But then you see, as yeah. soon as Luke tells him Obi Wan sent me and stuff like that, he's like, he changes. Yoda changes as a character. He's not the kooky, crazy little goober that he was like 10 minutes ago now it's different someone time him someone time him the fuck out the fight in rise of skywalker with kylo and ray is unparalleled best in star wars all-time goat fight in star wars history says the gatekeepers daimyo no no that 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 is Shinobi. literally that is literally a more forgettable fight than Finn versus Kylo or Rey and Kylo versus the Praetorian Guards. Like, that is way more fucking forgettable. Like, if if you didn't bring that up, most people would have forgotten that fight between Kylo and Rey ever happened. It's It's so forgettable and stupid. Do you remember when it was fun to speculate? You guys remember when we speculated about who Snoke could be, and that was a great time. And we and we were speculating about like, well, Kylo's gonna turn back to the light, and Ray's gonna turn into dark, and he's gonna have to join with his mom and dad and stop. It, remember how cool that was when we all thought that way? Now we speculate on how bad it's gonna be. And we'll always suck fast. Yes. And now we speculate on how bad Star Wars is going to be. You know how sad that is for me being a massive Star Wars? Like, Star Wars is my favorite IP. That's why I don't even read the Star Wars books anymore, man. I used to all the time. Now I go back to the old books that I love. And Uh, what do I do now? I read manga. I watch anime because everything sucks. 
except for freaking live action One Piece. But guess what? It's based off a of manga and an anime because they're good, and everything else is shit. And I'm really everything... Fargo season five doesn't go woke because I love Fargo and I need. There are my... video games that are good. There are video games that are also good. Yeah, but a video game is different. Yeah, like a video game is different. It's yeah. not. It's not you're watching something. Like, you're never going to get, even if you were to do, I don't even know what that means. Yeah, I don't know what that means either. I don't even know what that means. But you're never going to get a show, or a game, I should say, that's going to hit you the same way that the Charge of the Road Hero and Return of the King hits you. Yeah. There's, I don't think there's ever been a video game that I literally want to, like, get on a horse myself and go fucking ride with them and fight. Like, there's been times in a video game where I'm hype and I'm like, yo, it's the homies, let's go, we're about to kick ass. Yeah, but that's you doing it. It's not the same for Frodo. These people prevail against the odds on screen. Like, there's nothing better than, than everybody knows. Whether you've seen Lord of the Rings or not, you know how fucking badass the Rohirrim charge on Pelennor Fields is. Because you're like, they came. The homies came. They showed up. They showed up to help, even though they knew we're all going to fucking die. And what did they do? They prevailed because they're badass. We don't get that anymore. And you know who I they, also... You know who they had with 